Good. So uh, it was very interesting that uh, nothing, uh, nothing seemed to connect. So I was writing down notes yesterday on my iPad. My phone stopped working. <laughs> and, uh, but my uh, Microsoft Surface Pro 4 is performing well. And that's, not a, uh, that's not an ad advertisement. And really, it is hard to follow Vova Krasovsky because there are a whole bunch of stories that I have too. But uh, it's, um, I wanted to figure out how to, how to um, set the stage and uh, some kind of title to this. Maybe simply the repose of a saint. And there were a lot of things that happened over that uh, weekend in Seattle 50 years ago, which is mind boggling. Um, and it seemed like a real blur. Things happened so fast over the past, over the first 24 hours, that you couldn't really talk to them in, in, in chronological order. So I'm going to try to talk to them about in events. Vladika came to Seattle with the icon, uh, of course, icon, which was a really nice visit because everybody in Seattle loved Vladika. A lot of people from Shanghai and Tubabao were still around living in Seattle. Vladika was. Um, Vladika was Vladika, uh, like Father Father Victor said, he was a man, and he was he was, uh, but he was our spiritual leader at the time, and of course, uh, accompanying Vladika was, uh, excuse me, Vladika Niktari of blessed memory, uh, a man of a bishop of great stature. If you if you remember Vladika Niktari, yes, great stature. It's like, I <laughs> Uh, actually, I, accused, I got accused by Bishop Anthony of Geneva of looking like Vladika as a, as a subdeacon because you know, I had the stature too. Um, and then, uh, of course, the icon came. Unfortunately, Bishop uh, Peter wasn't there, and, and neither was, but they arrived later on in the evening that, uh, that Saturday night. Vladika. Um, it was a, just a normal visit, you know, Vladika, uh, when, 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 when Vladika Jan comes to, comes to town to service, and of course it was with the icon, and that was another great blessing, and there was really nothing, it was just expected, it was just a great, a great, a great weekend to have Vladika. Um, he um, uh, stayed uh, in the parish hall on the second floor, there was a room for him there. And it was a normal Saturday, and I use the word normal, it's a typical Saturday morning liturgy, nothing out of the ordinary. I served, I was his uh, some single uh, altar boy, and there's nothing more difficult uh, to have being a single altar boy in a hierarchical liturgy, especially when you have to carry, give the dikiri and dikiri and put the emaphore on and off. And I think at that last service, if my memory is correct, during one of the uh, dikiri trikiri, uh, the dikiri goes in the left, the bishop's left hand, the trikiri goes in the right hand. And so when you walk out, uh, when, to, 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 when the bishop blesses the the congregation, uh, you kind of flip hands because on the, uh, on the table behind the altar, um, they're on left and right. Well, I made the mistake in my, in my, in my haste of putting the dikiri in the, in the wrong position. So he looked at me, smiled, took them, and he blessed and he gave them back to me. And so I, I, I knew it at that moment I had made a terrible mistake. But the liturgy ended and Vladika uh, spent an inordinate time in the altar uh, and nearly three hours in the altar after the service. Nobody bothered him, uh, as, as we've heard in other, other accounts of, of other, other times where Vladika would stay in the altar for a long time. It was, it was normal, but in this case, it was unusual for him being in Seattle. After that, um, well, they went over across the street uh, to the home of the Denichiks, uh, who, uh, who uh, Chitz, uh, Michael Denichik, who passed away in 58, but he was, uh, he built the cathedral at that time. He was the, uh, the dean for a number of years. He passed away in 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 55. And Ates Andrei Nakanyechny took his spot. And as a matter of fact, um, Ates Ilyavin, uh, who uh, Vova mentioned, was our inter in in uh, in intermediate uh, dean for, for a while. And uh, his son, uh, his son Mike, Michael, uh, got married there. And, and that, uh, just as a sidebar, uh, was a Chinese Orthodox wedding. And so it made the Seattle newspapers. But that's a sidebar. But, um, so we've had a lot, of, a lot of interesting things happen. And, and again, it was just a normal weekend. Well, they went to lunch with uh, Father uh, at the Egyptians, came back, 
And his tradition, I don't think none, none, none of the speakers really talk about, but they always wanted to go to the cemetery. But they always wanted to go to the cemetery and have a penyejito for, for, uh, for, for, for the repose. And he was planning, uh, we had planned, uh, my dad and, 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 uh, and Mr. Lipinski uh, had planned to take him to the cemetery before, before the evening services. So Vodica, uh, we're waiting, they're anxiously waiting for him downstairs in the, uh, in the church hall. And he went up to his room, anxiously waiting, and then thud about 4.30 in the afternoon. My dad and uh, Mr. Khrushchev, Khrushchev, who knew Vladika in Serbia and Yugoslavia when he was there, that's how far back they went, um, both rushed up. And you have to remember, uh, for those of you who don't have gray hair or uh, weren't, burn, weren't, weren't born, uh, don't know what a um, rabbit ears are or a few other things, this was 50 years ago. So there were no faxes, there were no cell phones, there were dial-up phones. I mean, does anyone remember what a dial-up phone is? There were even party lines. So in order to get an ambulance or someone there in a hurry, you had to call the operator, and the operator would link you to that. So as a prelude to this, uh, my dad and, and Mr. Khrushchev uh, ran upstairs and found Vladika on the floor uh, laying down. My dad picked him up. Uh, Mr. Khrushchev uh, uh, ran over to the, to the single phone in, in, in the upstairs and started calling the operator. My dad picked him up and put him in the uh, chair. There was also a bed in the room, but we all know that Blake had never slept in the bed, so that's why there was a chair there. He looked down at my dad, as my dad recounted to me, and he said, I never felt like this before. He blessed my dad and gave up the ghost. And those were Levitica's last words. Of course, there's a moment of absolute terror. What now? Levitica Niktari, for those of us who knew him, was a little high strung at times. Ajets Andrei Natanyechny was a uh, chaplain in back in the old uh, pre-revolutionary time, so he had seen he had seen this kinds of well, he had seen the passing of, of, of a saint. But what do we do now? Uh, uh, the fire department showed up, uh, the uh, 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 and came up and, and, and looked at him, and and um, and one of them was heard to say as they were leaving, "What a nice way to go." So Vodeka went away fairly fairly peacefully uh, and uh, in the chair. Uh, and so immediately um, what had to happen, people need to be notified. Who do you call first? New York, San Francisco. And you're talking only on a single phone, trying to get out on one line out of the, out of the building. And so what they also had to do, they ran over to the Danichik, so they had a second phone. So they were calling back and forth to San Francisco and trying to get instructions of what to do. What was clearly evident um, was um, that uh, it became very clear from uh, the funeral home directors, which were also called, in order to get Vladika back to San Francisco uh, unembalmed, they had, the body had to be there within 24 hours. Uh, and so from 4.30 in the afternoon till 4.30 on Sunday afternoon, the body had to be prepared vested, uh, casket bought, airplane uh, freight arranged for, funeral director arranged for, not only in not only Washington state, but since the aircraft was flying over Oregon, we had, to, we had to get permission from the state of Oregon in case the aircraft had, to, had, a, had an emergency and had to land in Oregon. And as well as, of course, of California. This is Saturday afternoon at 4.30. So if you want to talk about miracles, this is kind of one of those miracles that you haven't really realized that happened. At the same time, uh, pre preparations need to be made for uh, his arrival, uh, or actually to get him back to San Francisco vested. So which time uh, the Lucano brothers, uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Peter and his brother were dispatched uh, with white vestments. And they arrived uh, late in the evening uh, I believe around eight or nine o'clock at night. 
uh, late, very late in the evening. Uh, and by this time, um, what was really interesting, and, I, and, I, and I'm looking at my notes here, which I'm completely ignoring, I'm doing off, 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 off base here, but no. Um, what was really interesting was who was there uh, at that time of when Vladeka. Vladeka was supposed to go to Vancouver, British Columbia, which is about 125 miles north of Seattle, along with the icon after Sunday liturgy. And so uh, two, two gentlemen from Vancouver uh, came down who were going to drive Vladeka up, uh, up to Vancouver with the icon. Um, and my, of course, my dad in, 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 and Mr. Khrushchev in Seattle and, and the Lukyanov brothers coming out of San Francisco. Well, if you see who was there, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Patrick Bredin, Bredin from uh, Vancouver and George Patrikeyev uh, were uh, uh, from, from Vancouver. Each one of these individuals had a very unique characteristic because they all came, each, everybody came from someplace that Vladika was. Mr. Khrushchev was from Yugoslavia, knew him in Serbia. My dad, uh, which I'll, I'll get into my, my dad's history, uh, was, was his reader in, in Shanghai. In, in Shanghai. Uh, um, uh, 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 Patrick was uh, an, an orphan who grew up in St. Tichon's orphanage. Uh, George Patrikeyev was uh, uh, knew him in Tubabao. And so here we have six, six individuals um, from all over the world, from one, from one point of Blatica's life or another. Um, After all the phone calls to San Francisco, you know, about getting directions and, and guidance and, 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 and the like, um, and preparing the body, because it's not often that you prepare a hierarch for, for uh, vesting. And so that was something that had to be uh, researched. And uh, not, not, not looking at the tidy, wasn't 100% sure on how to do that. So those, those kinds of discussions were happening, happening as well. And for the first time in Vladika's worldly existence, he was placed on a bed <laughs> where his body was prepared, washed, and awaited, uh, awaited the vestments that evening. At the same time, um, what had to start is what was going to happen to Vladika here in San Francisco? What, was he going to be entombed in the cathedral? Or, or was he going to be laid to rest in, in Colma at the Serbian cemetery? Um, for those of you who aren't uh, Bay Area residents, um, uh, after the earthquake of 1905 in San Francisco, and shortly thereafter, the city law prohibited any, any uh, burials within the city limits of San Francisco, and there, there, thereby you have Colma, which is the cemetery city, which has more dead people in it than living people. Uh, but uh, so what to do with how to, how to take care of what happens with Vladika? Are we going to put him in the cathedral? Uh, can we do that? So a petition was uh, sent to uh, the city council. Uh, this was happening almost uh, uh, on Monday or Sunday, very shortly, uh, to, to allow the entombment of their hierarchs or their, or their bishops uh, within the confines of their cathedral or their, or their cathedral. And not surprisingly, the support of the, uh, our, 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 our Catholic uh, brethren and Protestants, uh, higher uh, bishops and Episco uh, Episcopalians uh, came in and supported this, uh, med supported this, uh, uh, this activity be before the city council and I, and I believe a unanimous, uh, it was unanimously passed by the city council to allow Vladika's entombment uh, Downstairs, uh, in uh, where it's now a small, small chapel, those little things that may, may, you may have not have known about. Mayor George Christopher George. was Orthodox. <laughs> that helps. I did not know that fact. One of the key people in, in San Francisco that uh, my dad got to know uh, was a fellow named Alex Cattell. Um, and he uh, spearheaded a lot of the activities uh, trying to get uh, uh, the, the city council and a lot of other things going on from, from a lay person's standpoint. If you've ever seen that picture of Vodika Ian and his Kelia 
kind of sitting at his desk and having kind of looking like this in the typewriter black and white picture. Well, Alex took that picture. And, and, and when Alex told me about that, he, he was a very meticulous photographer. And uh, he had a splash set up. And finally, when Vladika was ready to take the picture, or when he was ready, Vladika kind of looked at him. And, and it's kind of not, not glaring, but kind of it wasn't a smiling face. Uh, one of the things that you may see, there's two versions of that photo, uh, one of which uh, the original has uh, a, Vladika had a cyst over his right eye. And that's the original. And you'll see some later photos that it was photoshopped out. That white little cyst was photoshopped out. It's a little, little trivia for you, too. So uh, that was shortly after, shortly before he had his, uh, his, his operation. Um, one of the things we had to do, we had to go out and uh, contact the local funeral home. At the same time, concurrently, uh, uh, San Francisco was, was, was doing it there at their end to ensure the body could be received here for, for, for lack of better words, a health and, health and sanitary inspection, which was, which was deemed by the, by the city and state laws. Uh, we went, um, while, while after the Lucana brothers arrived with the vestments, um, my dad and I and, and, and another, another gentleman went to the funeral, our traditional Russian funeral home in the middle of the night um, and need to buy a casket and explain to them, of course, uh, which casket, uh, you know, what it needed and uh, et cetera. And there weren't that many caskets available on the showroom at, at 11 o'clock at night on a, on a Saturday night. So my dad asked me, which one do you want? Which one do you think looks, looks better for Flodica? And I said, the blue one. Uh, and uh, so it was delivered uh, to the church uh, uh, later on. Um, and then comes the interesting part. Vladika had to be carried, once he was vested, prepared, uh, he had to be carried down uh, from the parish, second floor of the parish hall uh, into the cathedral. So it's about... Uh, for those of you who haven't been there, it's maybe around a 15-foot walk with a small turn, and then uh, down a flight of stairs, and down and out, the, out the door, and down another set of stairs, walking around the cathedral, and then up the stairs into the cathedral. For those of us who remember Vladika and have seen his, uh, 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 saw his, rel know, known by his relics, Vladika was a very short person. Um, must probably weighed. 125, 130 pounds, would you say? Not soaking wet as we get after, uh, after. Uh, here are six grown men in, in their early, late 30s or 40s. Pick Flodica up. I, I was carrying the jezel in front of them, in front of the procession. And uh, they could barely hold on to him. They were grabbing arms, they were sweating, trying to carry him. Six grown men carrying Lydica. By the time they got into the church, they were totally exhausted. And I could hear them, I could hear them grunting and groaning behind me. And of course, I didn't want, walking down the stairs in the staccato, I didn't want to turn around and, 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 and slip and slip myself. But they were totally exhausted. My dad later said, it was like carrying gold. That, that, uh, that morning, um, uh, that morning, liturgies of course started early because we had to uh, take, take Vladika to the airport rather early. Uh, people were informed of that and started coming into the church uh, fairly, fairly early. Liturgy was uh, Father Andrew. Uh, served, uh, was in a hierarchical service with Vladika, uh, with Vladika Niktari. I stood next to Vladika with, with his drizzle through the entire service. And uh, at the end of it, when the hearse showed up, uh, let, me, let, me, uh, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, let me finish the story. And um, uh, service, was, service was over. People paid their respects to Vladika, uh, put the mantia inside the casket, closed the casket, and then uh, took him down the steps of the hearse. These same six other men picked up the casket and carried it out as if it was light as a feather. 
And uh, never forget that. Um, what was I going to say? Um, when we, um, uh, just kind of a little anecdotal, um, anecdotal, but the uh, casket um, was, I guess, the, for lack of, a, lack of a better word, top of the line, rust resistant, uh, uh, and uh, with, a, with an eternal seal on it, and a lock. And so once the, once the uh, casket, and, and that's one of the things that we needed to have, uh, um, uh, in order to transport the body, it had to be hermetically sealed in the casket over the, uh, over the, uh, uh, over the fl during the flight. So that lock, that key was in there, and it was supposed to work and be rust resistant. Well, flash forward a number of years when Vladika's um, uh, uh, vault was opened and it was all rusted out, and they put the key in, and the key wouldn't work. They had a pride open, I believe, with a crowbar. Is that correct? Uh, and uh, I had to, uh, uh, I had to uh, bury my, uh, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my stepmother. I'm sorry, my mother-in-law at the same funeral home and the funeral director. So that was about 25, 30, year, 30 years later. I said he was still working as, as a funeral director. I said, do you remember that that night uh, that we were there at uh, one, about one o'clock in the morning when you said that? Um, it was rust resistant, and um, and that the key would work, and things like that. She said, oh yeah, he actually actually went out and got the got the uh, sail slip and everything else. I said, well, it rusted out, and the key and the lock wouldn't open it. So he was uh, he was a little uh, surprised. But anyway, that's <laughs> silly. Um, 20-year 20, 20 guarantee, you know, 20, maybe a 20-25 year guarantee, I don't know. I couldn't read the fine line. Um, four samples. I'm just going through my notes here. Um, you know, my dad, uh, I forgot to talk about my dad a little bit. My dad's first encounter with Levica was uh, when he was 13 in a hospital, and my dad was suffering from acute peritonitis, so he had a uh, nearly burst his um, appendix. Um, my grandparents called Vladika. Uh, my dad was, um, in 1937, was uh, 13, uh, 12 or 13 years old. Of course, you can imagine technology, uh, medical technology in 1937, rubber tubes, and, and the doctors were telling my, my grandparents that he wasn't going to make the night. Vladika came. And uh, yeah, verily, my dad survived the night uh, and uh, lived, lived, uh, lived to a ripe old age of 78 being, uh, until being taken by dementia and, and Alzheimer's. But that was my first, that was my dad's first encounter with Vladika. Vladika took a liking to my dad. He tonsured him a reader in Shanghai in the cathedral in 1941 when my dad was 16. Uh, he taught him the services left inside and out, and Vladika would take him along with him as his reader in Shanghai and also on Tubabao. He was being, I guess the, the, the common term now is being fast-tracked for, for being, a, uh, being a clergy. And then later on, Vladika realized that um, it might be good, uh, my dad would be, provide more value, I guess a word now, uh, more value to, uh, uh, more value as, as a layperson. Uh, as opposed to being a clergy, uh, being a deacon or a priest. Uh, my dad uh, went on to uh, uh, be uh, Mr. Or Colonel Bologoff's, uh, I don't know if you all know who Colonel Gregory Bologoff was. Uh, Colonel Bologoff was um, the head of the Russian emigrants, uh, I forget the na exact name of the group, but he, the, the Iraq. The International Refugee Organization. He spearheaded the evacuation of all the white Russians out of Shanghai and, and into Tubabao. Uh, great man. Uh, unfortunately, he's uh, got a little asterisk in history now, but uh, he was his protege as well and helped, uh, helped, uh, helped the evacuation and, and the settlement within Tubabao uh, with Mr. Bolodov. If you see Vladika in the pictures in Tubabao, uh, sitting with his uh, apostle in one hand, the person to his immediate right is, is Colonel Bologov, uh, if, if you want to know who that is. 
my dad then became, uh, came to, came to uh, San Francisco, Seattle. Uh, my parents were immigrants, of course, like a lot of us were, had to be sponsored in. Uh, my, uh, my mother's cousins uh, came, uh, uh, came over in the 1920s from Harbin, and uh, they were their sponsors. They're one of the early settlers in Seattle, uh, early uh, second, or second wave of, of immigrants into Seattle after uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, mining, uh, the miners of the early late 1800s. Um, my dad went on to uh, be one of the founders of the Russian Community Center in Seattle and its president for nearly 20 years. He was a choir director at St. Nicholas uh, Cathedral and also served in the parish council. So, and I think it was, I don't think, I can't imagine my dad being, with all due respect, a priest. <laughs> and you know my dad. <laughs> um, so he, it, was, it was always, um, as, and until my dad passed away, um, you often wondered why nobody had asked him, what were Vladika's last words? How did he die? And it, and it really perplexed him why uh, he, no, one would, no one asked him. And I think uh, there is one recording of him speaking about that and it's someplace in San Francisco and I know who has it and he promised it to me. But um, it was always bothered him, it was a burden to him. It was a burden to him is why, why was he select, why was he there, why wasn't anybody else there? You know, what, 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 why was he there and no one else? There's those little things in life that kind of, um, you have to, being at the right place, is it, is it a, is it a, look at that, is it a grace? Or is it something else, is or, 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 uh, or something else? Of course, when Vladika arrived here in San Francisco uh, that afternoon, that were late uh, before 4.30 in the afternoon, uh, he was taken to the funeral home here uh, and examined uh, for any, uh, any decay. And uh, part of the agreement, to my understanding, to uh, keep him um, unembalmed was they had to have a, a um, uh, had to be inspected at least once a day uh, from a temperature and from a, from a dec decomposition by the funeral home. And of course, as we all know, that did not happen. Uh, so uh, he, he. But they did inspect. They, they did. They came to the cathedral. Yes. I remember twice in one day. And, it, and the funeral parlor was uh, Daphne. Daphne. And Nicholas yeah. Daphne, who was also Orthodox. And, and uh, so he was very, very cooperative. And we have a document in the diocese, a letter from the funeral home, which actually. Can everyone states, hear Bola? Can everyone hear him? which actually states that there is something unusual about the remains of St. John in writing. So these are the little facts of, of that, that one week while, while, the, while the hierarchs uh, gathered and, and everyone gathered to, 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 uh, uh, to uh, lay Vladika to, to rest downstairs. And when, um, it was interesting and I, and I, and I don't know, maybe uh, someone else can help me correct, correct this, but as they were lowering Vladika's casket into the vault, there was silence in the, in the room. And somebody started to sing uh, Borja. And you don't do that normally until that's the last place that you lie in. And uh, apparently that was uh, Vladika's place until, he, until his uh, glorification. Um, Um, are there any questions I have before I kind of go on a different tangent? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. When you say the vault, are you talking about the chapel underneath? Yes, yes, the chapel. Yes, 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 the, yes. Yes, sir. You said, how old was he? And, and when you said you heard the thud, you said, uh, what, what exactly was the diagnosis or what, how, or how did he, what exactly transpired there? And what was the cause? The cause, they, they think, was, was, was a... Uh, uh, Heart attack. That's what the doctor said, but there was no autopsy. And let me—that's an—that's a good point. Uh, through, through the through the many years, there were lots of stories about how Vladika, the fire department, showed up, evacuated him in a evacuated him to a hospital, uh, the, and gave him an IVs, and then took him to the funeral home to embalm poppycock. You know, there was nothing. The, the funeral directors never even touched him. When they when we brought Vladika into 
the cathedral to lay him in the casket. The only thing they provided was guidance as to where to, to place the body optimally for, for that size of casket. So, and Flick was never taken to the hospital. There was no autopsy, no, nothing other than the fire department uh, getting this. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm sorry. Thank you for reminding me. Certificate of, certificate of death had to be regenerated within 24 hours. So that was, uh, that was another thing that, that had to happen in the time of no faxes or, or, or things like that as well. How old? was 72? 69. 69, I'm sorry. Stand, stand correct. He's about to turn 70. Yes, sir. Correct. Correct. Yes. To my knowledge, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. But at that time, 50 years ago, that was that was the the law, or that was the law. I would refer you. To, I would refer you to the the the. Um, as far as I know, 50 years ago, that was the law. Where, where it is now, I don't know. Um, what happened to the, the chair? I have people ask me about the chair. The chair it was uh, the room, uh, as you'll see in the video when it's completed, and Father Alexei Kotar will explain the, the configuration of the chapel as it once was. Was it actually a bedroom with a, with a sliding wall closet, a bed, and uh, a chair at the time, and of course an alloy for the icon when Vodica passed. After Vodica passed, um, uh, the chair was, the chair remained there because we really didn't know what to do with it. It was, we put an icon on it and uh, we, when I say collectively, the collective we. Um, and the bed was, was taken out, of course, and uh, chap and there was a penny heat in there every Thursday evening, uh, uh, started. Uh, change of, uh, change of, uh, change of uh, rectors and, um, had a, different ideas of what to do with the uh, with the room up there, and the sisterhood decided to have a rummage sale. And lo and behold, the chair was on the rummage sale, and my dad saw it, of course bought it, <laughs> um, and had some severe, significant words with the head sister, which or may I may not I may not repeat here, but um, it became uh, and my dad took it home. And my dad put a small room upstairs, um, uh, which he, uh, uh, along with uh, 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 my dad, received with the Gospodagian cross and, and, and had the uh, last arlets that he served on as well. Um, a long story, my dad, of course, as I mentioned, uh, ended up with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. He passed away. My mother had passed away earlier uh, in, uh, in 87. And uh, we had to, uh, uh, we had to get, we had to, we basically had to sell the house. And so, what do we do with the chair? I don't know. What, what do you want to do with the chair? I guess we, we can't. There's no room in the chapel for it because the chapel is already built out. And so we took it home with us. We took it and, and put it in our in our basement garage, covered it up, and made it nice, and uh, until we figured out what to do with it. So um, we finally sold the house. And uh, fortunately, we had to come down. To, it was right about the same time that Luther Fiodosi was getting uh, became a bishop, and uh, came down. And, and uh, since everything went so well, I uh, wanted to have a Malibin at with uh, Vodikayan and our, our dear family friend, Father Serge Kotar, served the Malibin there. And I told I told Father Serge about I have this chair. I don't know what to do with it. There's no place to go. And so he says, you know, they're building. A skeet in Svetogorsk, in Andamovka. That's the birthplace of Vodikayan. I said, where's that? <laughs> it's in the eastern Ukraine, uh, in the Donbass region near Donetsk. So uh, Father Serge, thank you so much, uh, put me in contact with people who knew people who knew people who knew people. And we had made arrangements to uh, donate the chair to... Uh, to the Svetogorsk Lavra, uh, and also to where Vodika, uh, 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 Vodika was born in the Maximovich estate in Adamovka. So how do you get a, how do you get a, a chair lounge a chair to the Ukraine? You UPS it, <laughs> uh, and it 
when it got to uh, it got to Svetogorsk. Um, very contentious. Um, what do you do with the chair? Is it a holy item? Is it a relic? Good question. Uh, should it be venerated? I don't think so. Um, but it was a. It, it, it blew up on the blogs after we had been there, and um, excuse me while I uh, look at my computer for it to recognize me. Um, but they accepted it, and uh, um, uh, I just Piotr Pierikrestov was there with us. Um, the uh, skeet of Saint John of Shanghai and San Francisco was the church was being finished. And the altar was, uh, was built over the home where Valedica was born uh, on the foundation. It is a thriving uh, skeet. If you go out to look at the Svetogorsk uh, Lavra on the web uh, their website and their, and their Facebook pages, they just had their uh, um, uh, celebration of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Valedica's uh, uh, feast day. Uh, Valedica Metropolitan Anufri was just there a few months ago. Uh, who is the Metropolitan of, of Kiev and all of Ukraine, uh, and uh, had uh, served, a, served a Maleben there. And off to the side there in the cathedral is, is, is the chair, so the chair. Um, very controversial because some of the pictures that were sent out uh, from Svetogorsk and, um, and hit, the blog, uh, hit the blogs uh, showed people kissing the chair. Well, actually, they weren't kissing the chair. There was an icon with the relics of St. John sitting on the chair on the chair, laying on the chair. And uh, so there's a significant amount of confusion, but it did start a sort of interesting thread about what is considered a, a relic or a, a holy item. You know, the, uh, what about uh, uh, St. John of Kondrasnats Kamilavka or uh, what's in the cathedral here uh, or the Sihad? What, what, what do you consider those things? So it was, a, it was a, for the most part, healthy, some little bits unhealthy discussion, but that's where the chair ended up and it's still there today. They're very, uh, 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 now Metropolitan Arsenio, had a very, uh, I, 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 I have to post the, the video of, of his propovich uh, about telling his parishioner, telling the people there that Vladika as a young boy must probably stood where you're standing as a young Michael praying as he walked from uh, his, uh, his home his estate in Adamovka, down the wooded roads, uh, trails to, to, to have liturgy. So that was the birthplace of Vladika's, of, 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 his, uh, of, his, uh, of, his, of his upbringing in that lavra. So you can basically look at the floor in the lavra, uh, which has its own very sad history that was turned into a sanatorium and a movie theater during the Stalin period. And, and it was just recently renovated in the past 15, 20 years. But uh, uh, that's where Vodica s started his, 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 his sacred path. And to have been a part of that, regardless of the chair, was, was, uh, uh, was uh, unexplained. Yeah, I can't explain the feelings. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. That's a very good question that I don't think any of us here on this planet can answer. It was like gold. It was. I don't know if I use the word heavy. I, I probably use the word solid because those of you who were present during the uncovering of its relics, when he lifted Vladika out of the coffin, his body was solid. His That's true. His were all in place. Uh, but and he was not white as a feather. He was. But nothing that's you, six grown men. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Six grown men. And, yeah. and, and by that time, rigor mortis had already passed, so he was fairly he was, he was flexible at the time. Any more questions? Thoughts? Yes, ma'am. I don't think anybody noticed it. I don't yeah. think, honestly. My, yeah. my father drove him around to, to several places a couple of weeks before he passed and came home and said, Vladika's got a very unhealthy cough. And Vladika was in the car and he was coughing a lot and, and he didn't have a cold. Uh, that was the only comment that I've ever heard of. 
Sifflon, that there's going to be someone on our panel who will directly address your question, not in terms of physical signs of sickness, but there were certainly signs that he was going to repose. Yes. And uh, you'll hear about that uh, as soon as we come back. Just one very important question. You mentioned Willie Morris asked. My question is, was there ever a Willie Morris? It's my understanding that there was. There was. It's my understanding there was. Can you repeat the question so everyone uh, Father Serge asked, was there rig rigor mortis at any point? It's, it's, uh, and I to my understanding, there was. That's why the, they had to wait to put him on the bed out of the chair, it's my understanding. Any, any more? Thank you, Thank you all so much for your kind attention.